I'm sharing some secrets. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today I am very excited to be sharing with you tips, tricks, and DIYs that is going to make your budget-friendly party the talk of the town. In a good way, of course. Let's get this party started. All right, let's get started with these tips, tricks, and DIYs. Tip number one is a two-parter, and it's involving utensils. So first of all, everyone loves a nice utensil, but who loves to wash them? I do not. For the most part, I always use plastic silverware. There is some nice looking silverware out there. You can get it in silver and gold. So you can fancy up that plastic silverware, but here are two tips for you when it comes to presenting it to your guest. Number one, I often get a phone call from one of my kiddos that says, hey mom, 10 people are coming over to swim this afternoon, which is great, except that I've got to quickly throw together some food and some snacks for all these people. So I do have one of these caddies. I picked it up from Home Goods, and I always keep it stocked with paper plates, napkins, forks, spoons, and knives. It's a super easy thing that I can grab, set down on the counter, and it's good to go. Now, if you're actually planning a party, what I like to do is instead of just throwing all the forks and something, the knives, the spoons, I like to take the utensils and wrap them with the napkin and then tie it off with a piece of twine or maybe a bow. If you have a colorful napkin, you probably don't need to do this, but for instance, these pink napkins, I added a paper doily. I got a huge pack of them on Amazon for super cheap. They were four different designs. It's just something a little extra that really helps fit in to the theme of the party and also makes it easier for your guests, especially if you're doing buffet style. They're not trying to juggle holding three utensils and a napkin and their plate. It's just all wrapped up into a neat little package. So let's talk serving pieces. So there are several things you can do. A lot of them are some DIYs that will just help really make your party stand out. One thing you can do is pick up one of the wooden rounds from your local hardware store. I typically get mine at Home Depot and you can either leave it as a whole circle. They have two different sizes so you can get a larger size or a smaller. And of course you could make this a pedestal like cake stand by adding something to the bottom or you could even paint it or stain it if you're going to make it food safe just make sure you follow all of the steps to do so using a food safe sealer on it but you can make it custom to the party so if you're having a summer party you could make fruit trays if you're having a birthday party you can make it look like a birthday cake lots of things you can do with a wooden round another thing you could grab for super cheap and grab it at the dollar tree are mason jars you can paint these very easily cover them with wrapping paper cover them with contact paper and have that match the theme of your party perhaps you don't want to wrap napkins around forks spoons and knives you could throw the forks in one, spoons in another, knives in another. So mason jars are another great piece to pick up. Also, what I love to do is pick up white serving ware. That seems to be just what I like to do because I feel like it's really easy to dress up white serving ware to match the theme of your party. Whether it's adding a colorful doily to it or if you have one of the trays that does have a little bit of a lip around the edge, I have one where I can actually feed in different themed ribbons to make it apply to the party that I'm having. But if you don't have one where you can feed the ribbon in, as long as it has a little bit of an edge, you can take any kind of ribbon that you want and just tack it on with some of those removable glue dots. You can pick them up at Dollar Tree and that will just help tie in your serving wear to your theme of the party. Another great thing to pick up and just have in your stash are some tin buckets. Again, you can pick up smaller ones at Dollar Tree. You can pick up some others. Home Goods usually always has them at home, places like that. And just make a printable. Make it printable and then again using those removable glue dots quickly tack that on to the piece and then voila, you've got yourself a custom little serving container to make your party stand out just a little bit more. Let's talk cups. Now there are a couple different ways that you can prevent everyone from getting a new cup every time they get a drink. Because if you don't provide some type of marker or a way for them to mark their cup, chances are they're not gonna remember which one is their cup and they'll just grab another cup. So one way that you can do that is you can go ahead and with the cups, depending on how many people you have obviously, but you can attach little trinkets or even little cup markers just with using some hot glue. So if you maybe wanna attach button, different colored buttons or bows or ribbon, just tack it 
with a little bit of hot glue on there and that way that will mark their cup. Now what I like to do is I just like to provide Sharpie markers. That's the easiest thing. And I have made a DIY in the past for a solo cup holder that has a built-in little holder for the Sharpie markers because that's the other problem you might run into is someone will grab the marker, walk off, and then you're like, where is the marker so I can write my name? So let's take a quick look at this solo cup holder that is a great thing for you to make and add to your entertaining serving wear. For this DIY, you need five pieces of wood. Four of the pieces are gonna be a one by four that is cut to five and a half inches long. The last piece is probably optional. You don't necessarily have to put a bottom on this if you don't want to, but I just had this extra piece of birch wood laying around, so I cut it to five and a half by six inches. Once I painted my four one by fours, I took the lid of the Sharpie marker and traced around it in the center of the side of a board. Now you could do this on all four boards. It just kind of depends on how many Sharpie markers you want to have in your little cup display, but I just did one. And once I got that all drawn, I used my Forstner bit here to drill down into the middle of my one by four. Then it was just a matter of taking my Cricut and quickly making a quick decal that just says, mark your cup and drink up. I applied that to one of the boards and then I assembled it using some wood glue as well as some wood hot glue. And that's it. Quickly, easily done. You can stack your solo cups in there and got the markers right there so no one will lose their cup. Now let's talk about some staple decor pieces that you can have in your stash and continue to use throughout several different parties. Number one is some type of door prop sign. I like to have this on hand because A, it helps mark the house for guests that are coming and B, it just kind of makes the festivities begin outdoors as they walk in the house. Now, there are a couple ways you could make a door prop sign for super cheap. Number one is just to go to the hardware store. I would recommend getting either a one by 10 or one by 12 and cutting it to about six feet, maybe five feet, depending on what you're think you might want to put on the sign. Longer is usually better in my opinion. Now as far as painting it, I would say paint it white or black just because any color that you add to it will look good on those two colors. I tend to usually always paint mine black just because there's several different things that I do with these signs. Now sometimes I will add cardstock. So for instance for my daughter's graduation party, I cut out with some Cricut colored, um, I'm sorry, Cricut glittered cardstock 2023 and some hearts and I simply attach that to the sign using glue dots. Occasionally I will paint a sign using stencils and when I paint on it because I want to reuse the sign over and over again black it's so easy I usually only have to do one coat of black to paint over it and I just keep reusing that sign over and over again. You could wrap it with contact paper you could do wrapping paper so a lot of different options to make a door prop sign. Again when it comes to clearance signs I like to pick up pieces, if I know I'm gonna be having an event, I like to pick up signs that aren't in terrible shape that I actually like the artwork of. And so for my daughter's graduation party, I had this one in my stash that had a truck and some flowers. And all I did is I went into Cricut Design Space and I simply just cut out a little decal with some gold vinyl that said, oh, the places you will go. Cause I thought, okay, hey, it's got the truck. And with all the flowers, it matched the theme of her team tea party. And so I thought that was the perfect little addition to it. I just left the artwork as it was added the vinyl. You could use temporary vinyl if you want to be able to reuse the sign. And then down the line, if you decide you don't need that sign, you can always paint over it and make it what you want. Another great piece that you might already have in your home that you could use for several different parties is a ladder. So if you have a blanket ladder, use it. All you have to do is just take some florals, wire them on there, add some fairy lights. I did it for my daughter's graduation party and I added some twine and some pictures. So you could very easily, if you're having maybe a Christmas movie themed party, you could cut out little pictures pictures from different movies and put it on there with some holly and berries and lights. Easy to do and it's something that you might already have in your home. All right now when it comes to tablecloths I as much as I would love to always go drop them off to the dry cleaners I'm a little cheap. I do not want to spend money on that so guess what I bust out my heat press. That is the easiest way for me to very quickly press the linens after I get it on the table. So I simply put it on the table and then I usually use a towel underneath it and I quickly just give it that real fast heat press. You get a little more um, square footage coverage when you're using a heat press versus an iron. I mean, if you want to take it to the cleaners, great, but again, I would rather put that extra money back into my party. And then when it comes to table decor, don't underestimate balloons. If you need to fill a bunch of space like my ginormous farm table that measures five feet across and 12 feet long, 
balloons was the answer for that because I just couldn't imagine having to try to fill that whole thing with florals and candles and all that stuff. So I definitely think of balloons, different sizes and scatter them about with a little bit of confetti. It goes a long way. And of course, candles is another thing that goes a long way. Now I prefer to put all of my candles in lanterns just because I don't really like to have open flames during a party and because you never know who might knock something over. And so by keeping them in lanterns, I know at least the fire is contained. Let's talk food. Now I'm going to jump into this next DIY because this is something that is super fun that you can customize for any party. So check this out. Jumping into this next little entertaining hack, we're gonna do a DIY with some Rocher chocolates. I mean, who doesn't love chocolate? I will share some ideas of how you can tweak this, but for me, it's gonna be a graduation themed DIY. I started by going into Cricut Design Space, which is the free software you get with a Cricut machine. I went ahead and typed in the word graduation just to see what would pop up. I love doing this because Cricut will pop up any images that has to do with that topic in their image library, along with any projects maybe that you've already done for Cricut, along with Cricut projects and community projects that you can actually go in and either just make them as is or even just tweak them a little bit to fit whatever event or project you're trying to make. So I started by creating a template of my piece of cardstock, which was a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So I grabbed the square, I resized it just by clicking at the very top menu bar, unlocking it and putting in 12 by 12. And then I needed to make a bunch of little squares. So to do the squares, I went back into images, picked a square, needed to resize it. And I did change the color just so that it would, you know, go on the background of my template a little bit easier so I could see it. But I just clicked the lock button again at the top, typed in 1.5 by 1.5. So you want one and a half inches by one and a half inches. And I made four of these squares. And then to make it easier, instead of literally going in and just doing it individually, I clicked and dragged across those four, hit duplicate, and four more popped up. And I continued to do that until I filled up this template of the cardstock. Now at the bottom, you're gonna notice I did do some rectangles. I had an idea, but I ended up scrapping that idea. So don't worry about those <laughs> rectangles. I went ahead and loaded up my 12 by 12 glitter cardstock. This is from Cricut. I stuck it down on my mat. And then I went in and went ahead and put on mat and selected my cardstock. Now you don't have to change the blade for this, even though it's a little more heavy duty, it's totally fine. The fine tip blade is good to go. And then send it and once you get it cut out, you end up with all of these sparkly squares. And the easiest way when I work with cardstock, I find is to flip your mat over and then just pull it and separate it that way. That's just my preferred method when I'm working with cardstock. So now let's get this assembly. Here's a couple of tips. It depends on how uh, over the top you wanna be when it comes to details and parties. Trust me, I've done them all. So one thing you can do um, as I sit here and just hot glue these little squares to the bottom side of the Rocher chocolates is you can pop off those brown um, wrappers and change the color. So I could have popped those off and put a black mini a cupcake liner if I wanted to. If I went in with a white mini cupcake liner, I could do a bridal theme. I could have done a red mini cupcake and done Santa Claus. So you definitely could add as many little hat type themes to this as you want. So once I get all of the little squares secured with a little dab of uh, the hot glue, I did order on Amazon some mini gold tassels that did need to be trimmed down a little bit. So I had to cut the strings as well as cut the tassel. I hot glued those to the center of the square and then the little Rocher uh, stickers that are actually on the top of each chocolate, those are my buttons for the cap. Now you certainly could use a thumbtack, you could use a real button, you could use your own sticker, you don't have to, but I just thought that was kind of cute to use that. And then these chocolates were all done, but to display them, I wanted to do one more DIY that is also another entertaining hack. So the serving tray, it's a plain white nine and a half inch round serving tray. I wanted to customize it a little bit. So guess what? Doilies. Now I'm getting two uses out of this. It's going to stretch. So I had this gold foil, craft foil that I just found a doily on Cricut Design Space. I cut it out, but it had butterflies on it, which matched my daughter's theme. And I used those gold butterflies as table confetti. So not only did I use the doily, but I also used the butterflies. So doilies are a great way to add color to your white serving wear and have it really tie in with the colors and themes of your party. And then this is the little display display of all the cute little Rocher chocolates. 
Now when it comes to food, I often go the buffet route and usually every part that I have has a charcuterie board. Everyone loves a charcuterie board, but here's something that you can do that's a little extra special. So maybe you're having a little more of an intimate dinner party, maybe 10 or 12 people. What I have are some mini cutting boards and I pick these up on clearance usually every year from Hobby Lobby during their spring uh, clearance. I got these for, I think it was like 85 cents. It was less than a dollar. I think it was 85 cents. And these are just great because A, you could make mini ones and then present it to your guests that way, or they can use them as their plates to pull off things from your charcuterie board. You could also personalize these. I've shown you how to make these wood safe after wood burning. So you definitely, if you're having a special, maybe a bridal shower or something, you could personalize it to that party. And again, super cheap if you can find them on clearance. Now, as far as how you set up your food table, if you want it to seem like you have more than you actually do, the key to that is having varying heights throughout your table. So that's using, you know, flat trays, pedestal trays, high tiered trays. Another thing that is easy to throw in are donut stands. You guys have seen me made this DIY. You can make it with Dollar Tree supplies very easily. A donut stand definitely gives you the height. Now you could do um, donut holes and work it around, make like a little tree if you wanted to for Christmas time. But doing something like that will definitely give you height. And what happens is by doing the varying height throughout the whole table, the eye goes up and down versus it going flat across where it seems like, oh, there's not much here. So you definitely wanna alter it across the table. Don't put all the tall stuff in the middle. You wanna kind of make mountains. You wanna make a mountain table. That's what you wanna make. Now what happens when you're setting up the party, you're going through the thing. So here's the thing. I usually have two laundry baskets in range on the day of the party. Number one is anything I'm setting out that has to do with the party, decorations, things like that goes into one laundry basket. That last laundry basket is for me to make a final sweep of the house. I literally just throw all of the random items inside of there, put them away in the laundry room, out of sight, out of mind, and it's an easy way to pick up all the clutter, but also keeps it a little separate so that you can keep your party stuff in one and household stuff in the other. And here is my last final tip. How do you make your house smell good without it being overwhelming? So I mentioned candles earlier. I do like to have candles around in closed containers, but I will use unscented candles when they're burning during the party. I don't wanna trigger a migraine for anybody or have overwhelming smells competing with the food. So that is what I use during the party. But on the morning of the party, I will get my essential oil burner and I will turn it on for about two hours. But here's the key. I will use a clean, fresh smell. I will not do florals. I don't do citrus. I don't do anything super heavy. It's just a very, if anything else, it just makes the house smell clean. And it's just kind of an underlying scent to all the other, you know, food scents that might happen with the party. And it seems to mesh really, really well. So that way you're not having anybody walk in and be like, oh my gosh, I can't handle the smell <laughs> because nobody wants to do that. And that wraps up the tips, tricks, and DIYs for a good party. Let me know down below if you've done any of these tips that I mentioned. Also, if you have a great tip to share, please drop it down below in the comments so that we can all check that out as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.